Hello and welcome to this week's Biz Smart Lunch and Learn webinar. Our weekly webinars are aimed to provide advice and share knowledge amongst business owners. And if you'd like to keep up to date on our latest webinars, please make sure you follow us on SlideShare or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also access all of our resources for business owners by downloading the Biz Smart app. Our presenter today is Biz Smart Select member Liz Painter. But before we start the webinar, um, can I ask you all to use the question mark function on your screen to post any questions that you may have for Liz and she will do her best to answer them all at the end of the session. Thanks Liz, over to you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Liz Painter. I'm going to talk about uh, websites today and the title of this talk is Don't Let Good Customers Bounce. I'm going to cover the most common website mistakes and how to avoid them. And the reason behind this presentation is just that I, I've worked with websites for a long time and I see so many instances where people are investing time and resources into getting traffic to their website, um, but then they're not following through when people arrive on the website and they're not doing the things they need to do to keep them there. So what I want to cover today is uh, I'm going to run through some, some website examples that I found online uh, and just share with you what I think they could do to improve. I'm going to go through some of the most common mistakes that I see on business websites um, and what you should do to correct those mistakes. I'm going to cover the number one mistake that businesses make um, when they're doing their websites and it's really simple to put right. Not necessarily easy but quite simple. And I'm going to tell you what good copy can do for you on a website because I think a lot of the time businesses focus on getting an amazing design for their website and then maybe don't concentrate on getting good copy on there um, and it's really important. So who am I to tell you about your website? I've been uh, working as a conversion copywriter and content strategist for more than 10 years. I've written and reviewed scores of websites for people. Um, I've worked with some of the best copywriters in the world and I've been running businesses myself since 2005. I've also worked with Bismart and their clients since 2013. So I've been doing this for quite a long time. So this is the first website page I'm gonna talk about. So. What I did um, it was a bit of an experiment actually when I was preparing this. I thought I would just Google a particular sector in Worcestershire and see what came up. And this was the only, I Googled IFA Worcestershire, this was the only website that came up that wasn't an advert or a list um, posting or um, you know a list of IFA sites. And so they're obviously doing something right because they came up on the first page of Google. But then when you get to the website, uh, there's a few things they could do to improve. Um, I've blocked out the name because I'm not here to make anyone feel uncomfortable about their website. Um, but essentially, the first thing that strikes me when I see this website is the picture. It's of horses. Um, I don't know what that makes you think, but it immediately made me think of Lloyds Bank. And I, I wonder whether that's what they want to do. Uh, maybe they do. But I, I personally, I think a lot of people have have issues with their bank over the years and maybe that's not the best association so um, that's just a reminder to really think about what the images on your website convey. Um, the only copy on here really is this um, independent impartial trusted which you know it, it's nice but does it say anything different about them does it mark them out as anything um, different from any other IFA I'm not sure that it does. Um, they've got their um, it is at least apparent what they do. I mean, not every business makes that obvious. It's really obvious there. An IFA, it says along the top, independent financial advisors. Um, and they've got a nice navigation. It's quite obvious where you might want to click to find out more about various things. Um, they've also got testimonials on the website. Um, and these are on the slider going along the bottom. So um, you see three different testimonials. I'm not sure I would have chosen this particular testimonial. It reads, um, the directors would like to place on record their sincere appreciation of your assistance, guidance and persistence. Um, that's not how we generally speak in day-to-day -day life. It, it's quite legalese and perhaps it's from um, a legal company. But um, the, what we really want to see on our website is much more conversational language, even if you're, you're in quite a formal profession. Um, you know, If you were recommending an IFA to someone, you wouldn't necessarily use that sort of language. Um, so I wouldn't have said that was the best testimonial to use on the home page. Um, just scrolling down the home page, they've got their awards, and they're all recent, which is really brilliant. And they've got an up-to-date blog, which is also really brilliant, and probably partly why they're featuring on the first page of Google. Um, because there wasn't a lot of copy on the home page, I did click onto one of their other pages. Um, and this kind of highlights a lot of common mistakes in one, really. So. This is very much about them. It's, you know, since 1998, we've been providing blah, blah, blah. 
Um, every paragraph starts with our, our focus, our initial meeting, our individual planning. Um, and it, it get, carries on down the page, which I didn't clip. But there's, there's some bullets that break it up, which is good. But it's, it, there's nothing that grabs you. And it's quite formal language. And it's very long sentences, which isn't ideal for the web. Um, shorter sentences are much better. Um, so honestly, I wasn't particularly um, excited by this website. It, it didn't grab me. I didn't think it had much that was unique about it. You could put another IFA logo on there, and it would work fine. Um, and it, to be honest, it depressed me a little bit. So I thought, right, I'll look for a marketing agency in Worcestershire and see what comes up, um, hoping that you know they would do a, a slightly better job. Uh, and actually, this is a great page. It's very simple and clean. Um, I've blocked out their name again, but it says cutting edge creative design, wow factor websites, mind blowing marketing. So it's really clear if you want graphic design, if you want a website doing, if you want marketing help, these are the people to go to. Um, they're recommended by a major magazine in their sector. Um, and most importantly, they tell you what to do next. So it says, wait, there's more, click or scroll. So you know that there's more to do and, and you know where to go. You don't have to think about it. Whereas on the last website, it wasn't necessarily that clear what you needed to do next. So if you scroll down, um, they then give you a bit more information about themselves. Um, I like the fact they've got this, this heading, what makes us different. Um, I think if you read through it, um, it says, oh, we can take your business from zero to hero. So I'm assuming that means they want to work with startups, um, but they could maybe make that clearer. Um, it's, there's a lot of multidisciplinary creative design, digital marketing. They're listing a lot of things that they're, that they do that they care about. I'm not sure it's as customer focused as it could be, but it's not awful. Um, the, again, the sentences are quite long. I would maybe want to see shorter sentences. And the, the thing that really gets me is it's all written in capitals, and that makes it really difficult to read. Capitals are fine for headings, um, but for your body copy, you really want to have um, normal lowercase. It's much, much easier to read. Um, and it, it, there's a few things they can improve. I like the fact that um, they, they show you where to click. So you could click on exciting client projects, or they've got the number there ready for you to call if you're ready to give them a ring. Um, so it is clear what you could do next, which is always a good thing, um, because people like guidance. They like a natural flow through a website. And that would be the natural next thing to look at, would be their case studies and their client projects. Um, so yeah, I think it could be improved, but it's definitely better than the previous one. Um, after this one, I I decided to Google Business Telecoms in Worcestershire, and this was, again, I think the only site, maybe one of two, that came up on page one of Google. So again, they're doing something right. Um, you know, it's a nice, clean design. It's got a simple navigation at the top where it says home, why ours, products, information, all of that. It's quite easy to find your way around it. Um, the picture, unfortunately, it looks like a stock image. It's not saying anything unique about their business. Um, we're all ears. What does that mean? Um, it's, I would say that's placeholder text. It maybe says they're good listeners. Um, but is that what you're looking for in a telecoms company? I'm not sure it is. Um, they say communication is a big talking point. Again, um, I'd love to see them saying something a bit more about their company and what's different about it at that point. I don't know that that really says anything at all. Um, and then it goes on, our reason for being is to provide you with the most appropriate and tailor-made communication system at exactly the right price. Um, this is something that pretty much every business is going to promise. You know, we give you a bespoke solution um, at the right price um, that's right for you. Um, there's nothing unique there that you wouldn't get from another telecoms company. Uh, then they go on, they're an established provider of business telecommunications with expertise you can rely on. Okay, we like the fact that they're established. That's, you know, they've been around a while. They're Probably there's a good reason for that, hopefully. Um, I'm not sure they can say they've got expertise that that you can rely on. I prefer to hear that from a testimonial. Maybe a testimonial higher up the page would be good. Um, so scrolling down this page, you know, they, they go on to say all the different services. That's great. They've got a video. I didn't watch the video, but let's assume it's a good video. It, it's always a good idea to have a video on your home page. It will connect with your audience, introduce them to you. Um, and Google likes video as well. So that might be another factor in them appearing on the home page. And then we go down and they've got, uh, we're the communication expert, communications experts. That's fine. Again, I, I'd like to see something a bit more unique, but that's that's an okay heading. Um, they've then got their six different services, easy to see, easy to click on. So if you're there for a particular reason, you know where to go next, which is great. Um, and then at the bottom, they've got 
um, testimonials again. And these are these are good testimonials. Again, they're on a slider. I wouldn't do that. I think it, it slows the website down, and um, they never go at the speed you want them to. They're always too slow or too fast. So depending on the reader. So I would have your just have them on static in static columns or blocks um, on your website. So that's covered quite a few of the mistakes that we see. It, it's um, just to summarise some of what I said um, about those websites. And, and just to reiterate, they are not terrible websites. There's just ways they could improve and ways that would stop people um, from bouncing off the website and actually have them engage with the website and, and hopefully go into their, their customer funnel and, and become customers. So one of the issues was bland, meaningless words. And, and lots of companies do this. They just haven't put in the thought that they need to into what they're putting on their website. Um, versus communicating something that's valuable and unique, something that really explains to the customer why they should use that business, what's so great about it, what's different about it. Um, another thing that's quite common and that we saw on one of those websites was um, talking about yourself and what matters to you as a business rather than talking about um, your customers and what matters to them. You know, it's if you talk about all the services that you provide from your point of view, it doesn't get across to the customer that you understand them, that you understand their problems and their pain points. Um, you need to get inside their head and communicate that more. Another issue, and this is this is particularly um, an issue on the web, you do not want to use long sentences and dense blocks of text. Um, really, you want to be using very short sentences as much as possible, and maybe some mid-length sentences. I wouldn't really go beyond about 16 words per sentence if you can help it. Certainly on your homepage, that's probably stretching it a bit anyway. Um, but elsewhere, 16 is, is a good one to aim for. I'm not saying you can never use longer sentences. You know, if you're writing blog posts and stuff, you will want to use some longer sentences. But dominantly, predominantly, you want shorter sentences. And you've got to bear in mind that, that some people are skimming, probably most people. Um, if, if you grab someone's attention and you're the service or product that they need right at that moment, they will read. Um, if not, they're probably going to be skimming. Um, so you need headings, subheads, headings, uh, bullet points, just lots of different ways for them to engage with it without reading everything. So you might highlight important words, that kind of thing. And then another issue that we saw on um, one of those sites in particular was using overly formal language um, versus using conversational language. And it happens a lot. And I think one of the reasons for that is people come out of school or university and they've been taught to write essays, they've been taught to use quite formal language to, to form arguments using formal language. And it, that doesn't connect with people, it doesn't sell very well on a website. What you really want to do is talk the language of your customers um, and use conversational language. Now I'm not suggesting that you have to um, be down with the kids if you're in some kind of profession where you're expected to be, you know, if you're, if you're an accountant, we don't want to see street slang on your website, but equally you do want to talk in a more conversational way. Um, so you might have already guessed what the number one biggest mistake is based on what I've already said, but essentially it boils down to not doing enough research and not doing enough thinking. So not really sitting down and, and talking to your customers and getting inside their heads and finding out what they do care about. You know, if you talk to your existing customers, what do they rave about? What do they love about what you do? What are the things that are important to them? Take them, talk to them, take them back to when they started working with you or when they first bought your product. What what was it that made them buy it or made them work with you? Um, and what keeps them coming back? And, and get into that. And that's the stuff you want to communicate on your website because that's the stuff that actually matters to people rather than you guessing at what matters to them. Um, and when you've done all that research, you'll probably want to organize it and think through exactly what you want to say. And then um, the next stage would be to, to work on your value proposition. Now, you might already have done this. Um, certainly, if you've worked with Bismarck, you definitely will have done it. Um, and it's a really important part of, of putting together your website. And I think what happens a lot of the time is people do their value proposition and they don't actually get it out and have a look at it and use it or update it for, for when they're putting together their website copy. Um, in case you're not sure, um, a value proposition is a promise of value. So you're expressing why your company or your product or your service is going to be valuable to your potential customers, the people that have landed on your website. Um, what problems does it solve for them? What are the specific benefits? Not vague, um, not vague things that you do, but specific benefits that people can think, oh, that would actually be really valuable to me. Um, and what's unique and different 
about what you do compared with what your competitors do. Um, when you express your value proposition to um, to your website, um, to people that land on your website, it needs to be in the language of, of your customer, not, not your language, but their language, because that will connect with them. Um, you want to join in with the conversation going on in their head, so that when they're reading, they're going, oh, right, yeah, yeah, that is exactly how I feel. Um, and it shouldn't be a guess. It needs to be based on research, on talking to your customers, on looking online at what people are saying in forums about um, businesses in your industry. Um, you need that all-encompassing research so that you're not guessing at what you should put on your website, what you should put in your copy. Um, just because it's it was an easy thing to do, rather than me trawl through small business websites um, to find good ones, I have um, given you an example here of quite a large business's website, um, Slack, which you might know is a, a software company, um, it's a messaging software, um, and they've got a really good value proposition here. So their headline is, imagine what you'll accomplish together with this picture of a smiling business owner. Um, and it, that, that headline grabs you and makes you think, oh, yeah, they're definitely talking to me, a business owner, somebody with a team of people. Um, then you read on, it says, Slack is a collaboration hub for work, no matter what work you do. OK, so whatever business I'm in, I can use this. It's a place where conversations happen, decisions are made, and information is always at your fingertips. Um, and there they're touching on what is quite unique about Slack, which is unlike other messaging platforms, it's quite easy to find a message that was maybe sent two weeks ago, two months ago, even a year ago, um, because they've got a really good search facility on there. So it's always at your fingertips. With Slack, your team is better connected. So they've got their value prop totally sorted there. It's, it's really, it really connects with the right audience. It's not in formal language. It's in the language we would talk, talk in every day, always at your fingertips. Um, and that is a great value prop. Um, another example, and I'm, I cheated a bit here because I just thought, oh, who will have a great value prop? I know Apple. I know if I Google iPhone, Apple will have a really good value prop. Um, now, I, I've always had iPhone since, I don't know, for years and years, but I haven't updated for a long time, so I have no idea what the new technology is. I've got an iPhone 6. Um, but I read this, all screen design. I didn't know what that was, but I can guess it means it hasn't got the little margin around it. So it, it's really precise and specific and clear what it is. Um, longest battery life ever in an iPhone. Okay, they're touching on one of the major pain points of owning an iPhone, which is the battery does run down really quickly. So that's a really good thing to have in the value prop. Um, fastest performance, yeah, an iPhone running slowly is annoying. Studio quality photos. Um, I don't know that I personally care about that, but that um, is very specific and precise, and it makes it more desirable. The picture there makes it desirable as well. Um, so. It, it really is great. And the other thing that I like about it is they've got this learn more button and a buy button. So whether you've gone there to do some research and find out more about the phone, it's obvious where to go next. If you just want to buy one, it's obvious where to go next. Um, so your value prop needs to be unique, desirable, memorable, and specific, just like those two value props were for Slack and for Apple, for the iPhone. And it needs to be on your website. You need to use that value proposition on your home page so people know exactly what you do and what's great about it. Um, so just to recap, the number one biggest mistake that I see is, is people uh, creating their website copy, not having done enough research, uh, and not having done enough thinking about what should go on their website. And I, I know exactly why this happens. It, a lot of the time, you know, you've had the design done, you invested a lot of budget in that, and a lot of time in that, and you just want to get it up, you just want to get the website live, and the copy gets either dashed off or it gets um, taken from elsewhere in your marketing, um, or, or you maybe haven't hired the right copywriter to do it and they haven't done the research that's needed. Um, so it's, it's an easy mistake to make, but it's something that I think every business needs to look at and, and sort out. Um, so how does good copy deliver value for your business? Um, if you've got good copy on your website, it will grab your prospect's attention. So when someone lands on the website, it will really grab them and make them want to read on. Um, it will make it really clear what you do and why what you do is so great. Um, it will make them feel that they're in the right place. So the message on the website will match wherever they've come from. So whether um, they've come from an email or an ad or um, a Google result, um, the message will match. So, oh, OK, I'm in the right place. This is for me. Uh, and then 
it will make it easy for them to see where to go next. There's a natural path around your website and it's obvious where they can go next. And it will also encourage someone to act. So whether that's to get onto your mailing list or to phone you, whatever the next step is, um, it will get them to do that. And the main goal of it is to stop them bouncing. Good website copy will stop people from bouncing away from your website and help you turn them into customers. Maybe not immediately, maybe not on their first website visit, but you'll get them into their you'll get that prospect into your funnel and hopefully turn them into a customer at some point. Now, uh, here's um, again from the software industry. Here is a really good example of a great website with a good value prop on the home page. So this is a product that's aimed at businesses with big teams of software engineers um, and it, it gives them and gives your software engineers an insight into the work they're doing um, and gives management an insight into the work that's being done. So it's quite a complex product but it's a really simple value prop. So engineers build business and then accelerate velocity and release products faster with visibility into your software engineering team. So it's very simple and to the point um, and it tells you exactly what the benefit is. You can release products faster, so you can build and release um, applications faster. And it's really obvious what to do next as well. So if you want to just get get onto the next stage, which is actually on this um, book yourself in for a demo, you, you would click the get started button. If you want to know more before you do anything else, you can explore the platform. Um, and then also the navigation along the top is really simple. And the picture is in line with their business. You know, it's, I'm guessing it's San Francisco, um, or somewhere in Silicon Valley, and um, it just fits. And it's actually, a, it's, a, it's a changing picture. It changes, as it shows you software developers as well. Um, but it fits with the, everything works together. Um, so essentially what's had to happen to get that website, to that website to that point is that someone has sat down, a good copywriter has sat down and looked at who the different buying personas are, um, you know, engineers, um, managers, all the different people that would be interested in that product would be potentially on the website. They've looked at how aware those people are. So um, is this a product they've heard of or do they know nothing about it and they need more information? Um, and they've looked at how sophisticated um, their potential customers are. Do they understand this software or do they need really detailed explanations? Um, and all of that stuff goes into the website. And it's 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 marketing 101 essentially, um, and you you could argue that I I'm potentially using the wrong uh, language here for my own audience because if you're not really familiar in with in-depth marketing stuff, then this might be a bit of a turn off. But this is the stuff that goes behind all of the information that goes into making a website a good website. Um, so you start with your value proposition, and then you, you apply everything else that I've talked about. And that will help you to create good copy um, to go on your website. So just a recap on what I've talked about. Um, talk to, about your customers and what matters to them rather than what matters to you. Um, use shorter sentences and be aware of skim readers. So make it easy for people to skim the copy. And use conversational language. Don't get bogged down in overly formal academic language. Now, th there's a lot of stuff I've covered here today, and maybe you're not at a point where you want to go over all of the copy on your website. But even if you don't want to invest time or energy or resources into this right now, into everything we've covered, do this. Make your visitors feel like they're in the right place. So just make sure your images give them a feel that, this, yeah, this is actually where I should be. This does match up with what I was looking for. Um, and, and do that with the copy as well, if you can. Give them something to do. Uh, so make it really obvious what the next step should be. Um, what should they click on next and have a call to action on every page so that because if you don't ask customers to do something or tell them what to do next that they'll, they'll probably get distracted and bounce from your website so have a call to action on every page um, that's all from me today um, I'm actually launching a new website review service so if that's of interest to you drop me a line and when it goes live I will let you know thanks very much Great, thank you very much Liz. You've got some questions waiting for you. Um, the first one is from Sarah and she asks, um, if I was going to change the images on my website, um, what process should I go through to choose new ones? Okay, so um, ideally <laughs> you would hire a photographer to shoot some images for you. Um, that's going to give you much more personality on your website if you're a small business. 
Um, if you're not going to do that, I would use some of the higher quality stock libraries, but um, have a think about what emotion you want to invoke in the customer when they land on your website. So um, how do you want them to feel? Do you want them to trust you? Do you want them to feel excited about your product? What is the emotion you're trying to trigger? Um, and choose pictures that will do that. Okay, thank you. Um, and your next question is from Simon, and he says, I've all, um, I always hear that about having a unique value proposition, but most M um, MSCs aren't quite different from their competitors. How do you come up with something unique when you're not quite unique? <laughs> yeah, I hear that quite a lot, and I think there's some some truth in it. I think, you know, what's one accountant can look much like the next, but I think it's really important to talk to your customers and, and find out from them why they stick with you and what what makes you unique to them. Um, I mean, a good example for me is my own accountant. I've, I've had various accountants over the years and they've been fine, um, but the one I've got now is brilliant. I get a call every month um, where we go through where I'm at in the business, he makes suggestions, we talk about plans for the future. Um, and we do that every month and that's made a massive difference and I would say that is his USP and I'm not saying that there are no other accounts out there that do that, I'm sure there are. Um, so it's not 100% unique but I think it is quite different from what you get with a lot of accountants. So that I, would, I would say, you know, talk to your customers, find out what they get excited about to, to hone in on your, your USP. Okay, thank you. And another question from Claire. Um, can you expect? Can you expand on what you mean when you say join the conversation going on in your customer's head? Okay, so yeah, I, I mean I touched on this a moment ago, but it's um, it's so you talk to your customers, you find out what's important to them, and you use that in the copy on your website to the point that when your customers are reading it, they're kind of nodding along, going, "Yeah, oh my god, this person totally understands me." Um, the only way you can do that is to talk to quite a few different customers um, and find out where they were at before they started working with you or before they bought your product, um, take them back to that time and get out of them what made them go with you and then also um, what what makes them stay with you now. Um, and that's that's going to touch on the conversation going on in your customer's head and a lot of it's around pain points. So what was irritating or painful for them? What was their problem before they started working with you or before they bought your product? That's what you want to touch on. Okay, thank you very much, Liz, um, for presenting today's webinar. I will be sending out a copy of um, the presentation and Liz's contact details out to you all very shortly. So please email Liz direct if you have any further questions. So just before we close, just a quick reminder, if you'd like to keep up to date on our latest webinars, please make sure you follow us on SlideShare or subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also access all of our resources for business owners by downloading the BizSmart app. That's the end of today's webinar. Thank you all for joining us and we'll hope to speak to you again soon.